Ah, well, you know, I've had a difficulty with this whole thing about entrapment and all those things. This is not the first time we are going to look at that methodology. Mm. In any case, it is as old as undercover journalism. From the 1880s, go do read the literature. It's always been there. And there's always going to be a certain ethical challenge or dilemma relative to that. So I admit that. I have no problem with those who believe it is not a good method and want to criticize it. And this is, they are entitled to that. But I've always said something. Look, the cure for this so-called entrapment is integrity. Integrity is your armor, your asana against this so-called entrapment. And usually, undercover journalists, when they want to do these things, it's not just a flight of imagination. It is because they hear things and fingers and voices are pointed in certain directions. There's always that base right. from which they proceed. And I've been listening to all the discussions going on. Everybody so, but this phenomenon is not new. This phenomenon is out there. Right. We've all been talking about it and all that. Perhaps we've not come forward with anything of evidential value to pinpoint in specific directions. But we all see it's there. Mm. So if it's there, then uh, lower the entrapment chorus. I've been told stories by ladies, and I have, mm. no, I have no reason to doubt them. No. Yes. It happens. Yes. Yes. Look, just a bit of a diversion, digression. This judge's thing, yes. Tiger I did. Correct. It was all over. We all knew it for years. And it's the not stopped, really. Yes, and even Chief Justice, <laughs> Chief Justice, <laughs> over the years, different mm -hmm. Chief Justice had publicly spoken against no, this thing. You know